motorcycles, new or used, big or small, we buy them all. One to 1,000, any make, model, or condition, give us a call. This, my friends, is one badass Sportster. Absolutely the fastest iron head, possibly one of the fastest Sportsters I've ever ridden this side of a Buell. Um, what a classic, classic machine. One owner bike, owned it since it was in 1974. He uh, purchased it, it was one year old, he's owned it since 74. This is Ken Kappel from the New England Motorcycle Museum. I'm here with David and Delma Ford. David, how are you today? It's kind of a big day for David and Thelma. Um, they've been together, how many years have you guys been together? 45. 45 years. And uh, they bought this Harley together in 1974 when it was a year old. Yeah. Right, Dave? That's correct. And David is an engineer and he also is a metal specialist, so he knows a lot about um, creating a motorcycle that is something special. And he's done a really amazing job with this bike. As soon as it pulled up, the heart started beating kind of fast. You guys know him, an iron head nut. I have iron head in, in, the, in my blood, I think, but um, to me, I've always said I think it's the most beautiful Harley motor ever made, and David really went the extra mile on this engine. Uh, starting in the lower end, Dave, give us a quick rundown, starting in the bottom end here. All right, so we got four and a half inch S&S wheels and three and seven sixteenths inch jugs that later on were bored 80 over, so the displacement is 86 Cubic inch. Which I believe somewhere just under 1400 cc's. I haven't calculated it, but that's yeah. that's a big bore. 40 percent over stock. Yeah. Absolute torque monster. The heads are dual plug heads done out at Baisley Performance out in Oregon. Um, it's got great big man manly valves. Plugs on both sides. And it's got damn near 600 uh, thousand slip cams. It's a custom-built cam for this motor oh, yeah. builder spec. Yeah. Dave showed me the receipts. He's got just under twelve thousand dollars in receipts for all the engineering and, and uh, um, parts for the engine, and including the transmission, which is something special too. And we've got uh, close ratio gears, uh, Andrews gears. Um, we've got a truck, heavy-duty bulletproof tranny door. Um, it's, it's all been gone through. Tranny's built. But what do you got for clutch and primary? A uh, Barnett racing clutch with a truck spring on it. So David, is, being an engineer, of course he bought a scope. Is your scope's in the truck? Scope's in the truck. The, We've already looked at the bore. Wait, it looks like the day it was. The bore looks, he showed me on, on the scope, he pulled the plugs out. It looks brand new. You can still see every hatch mark. There's no uh, indication of anywhere at all on this motor. Less than, you, you estimate less than, Probably a less, than a thousand. less than a thousand miles on it. The oil is perfectly clean. It's got a battery fully charged, it's got fresh gas in it, fires right up and purrs like a, well it roars like a lion, you can't say it throws like a kitten. This is no Honda, that's for sure. Yeah. So, um, we've got the performance machine, brakes. Performance machine, rear brakes, and discs. And the rear wheel is something that, that David actually engineered and built. Right. It's a spoke rim with a, how did, how did you it's spun it? aluminum uh, covers. Spun aluminum covers, so it looks like a f modern fat boy wheel, but that spokes underneath there if you ever need to true it. Metzler tire on the rear. Um, what kind of shocks are those? Are those the factory shocks? Or? Uh, they're, they're basically aftermarket, but they're to resemble factory. So David's owned this bike for what, 45 years, right? 44 years. 44 years, coming up on 45 years. Um, and has spared no expense in the maintenance and uh, oh. care of this bike. Um, uh, the paint job is something really unique that, that David laid down the base coat and then describe the, um, the, the, the uh, that's, that's all 24 karat gold leaf that I had one of my local artists do for us. It's gorgeous, it's absolutely gorgeous. Unbelievable. 
So yeah, this is, this is one fire breathing dragon. The triple clamps, just uh, these are something really special too. It's got the, the dual disc brakes on the front and these are... Um, Those are Hurst Earhart brakes. Hurst Earhart brakes with uh, chrome lowers and the forks are really special. They have deep I, I turned all these. Wow. These were all turned. Wow, so you turn, turn the lowers. On, on these the are all 321 stainless uh, trees. That's your specialty, stainless, yeah. right? Yeah, he's, I'm a stainless steel distributor. So he, he's, he, these are stainless steel custom made. Did you make these yourselves? Yes. Pretty fantastic work. Yes. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, if you had to pay someone to do custom work like these, these would be really expensive. And unlike most forcers, most forcers have zero dampening in the forks of this era. All they were spr spring, springs and that's it, and a little bit of oil. He put dampening rods in here. Uh, these are shallow forks, correct? Yep. So he put shallow dampening rods in there so the performance of these is off the hook compared to the stock one. And there's a long stroke uh, on the front end. Is this an inch over stock? Or? Well, I think between between the 16-inch uh, rear tire, which actually gives it the illusion that you have a longer fork. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's pretty standard on okay. the fork. And there is no rake. That's a standard rake. Standard rate, right? Yeah. So yeah, the, 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 although he did uh, do some molding on the front of the frame, the rake is stock on, on the front end, and the trail looks to be stock on the triple tree. Yep. Uh, but they are much beefier than the stock steel. These are stainless steel, much thicker. Well, they were castings, and they were they yeah, were real cheap. The stock ones are cheesy. Uh, the bars, love the bars. It's an XR twelve hundred Ben bar with a four inch riser, straight riser, um, all chrome controls on the upper. Custom four inch headlight. The best part is the sounding device. I love that. <laughs> so, um, a lot of cool touches everywhere, like the foot brake. Uh, what, what's the scoop with the, you got a, a cycle generator? Uh, oh, that's, that's a generator. That's it. No, that's an alternator. Oh, that's the aftermarket alternator. Which, yep. you know, that looks brand new. It is. Just fantastic work. Um, custom. Is this stainless also? Yeah. The brake, you made that? Yeah. So David custom engineered and built the mounting for the PM brakes in the, uh, I don't know whose rotor that is, probably a PM rotor, but uh, very cool bike. Uh, he dynoed it, and what was the dyno report? It was running right around 78. Also, oh, just under 80 horse out of his horse, that's pretty remarkable stock there, about 50 horse, and it, it sounds super tight. Steering head dampers, custom uh, engineered, it looks like. Yep. Uh, braided stainless lines everywhere on the clutch. Uh, and the dual front disc brakes and on the rear brakes. So, uh, Kenny, is there anything I left out? Or? I think you just about summed it up. You can't touch every part. Twisted spokes on the front. David, thank you so much for the bike. I know it's, it's, a, it's, it's a sad day to let it go, but it's, it's going to, it's going to go to an enthusiast that loves this type of bike as much as you and I do. And I'm going to certainly enjoy it while it's here. It may show up on YouTube again with a custom paint job on it. Uh, I was thinking if we do do a Harley racing thing, black sure. or orange, Absolutely. maybe put a number plate on it, maybe make it more of a flat tracker style, I'm not really sure, but Lance is the guru when it comes to the engineering of these, so we'll, we'll bounce it off of him, but as it sits, it's beautiful. I might even put this in the May 19th show that Murder Cycles is having at the mansion in Rockville, so um, thanks for watching everybody, and God bless America.
straight up. This is the fastest fork I've ever ridden, let alone an iron head. This would have been capable as a national, national caliber race machine in the set 1974. You could have taken this thing to Daytona or quarter mile racing or flat tracking. It's got over 80 horsepower at the rear wheel on the dyno. It's 86 cubic inches, just under 1,410 cc's. The engine is brand new, less than a thousand miles on it, just been broken in. I just got done riding this bad boy and wow, what a rush. Absolutely the fastest Sportster I've ever ridden um, and truly a museum quality piece, a period correct paint job on it, paint job's off the hook. It's a two-tone <laughs> flip-flop paint. One angle it looks a steel blue, from the other angle it looks like a metallic purple. Um, and in the flame jet, uh, the, um, uh, mural on the gas tank with the eagle wings and the skull is just, just absolute work of art. Very, very rare, rare situation where we get a bike in and we've done flake. absolutely nothing to this bike. This is exactly the way it came to us. We did not detail it. Mr. Ford has owned this bike since it was new in 1974. Um, it's a 1973 model. He purchased it October of 1974. So um, I have a clean title right here. Commonwealth of Massachusetts Certificate of Title. And Mr. Ford is a unique ind individual. Him and his wife together bought this boat, bike. And you'll see a picture in the video of the two of them when they, when they dropped it off here yesterday for us to sell it. They've owned it for 45 years. Mr. Ford is an engineer. He also owns a company that uh, does CNC machining on stainless steel so not only can I show you twenty thousand dollars in receipts for uh, twelve thousand of which was put into the engine and mechanicals and um, what I don't have receipts for is the custom made stainless steel triple clamps which he did himself and he said you couldn't you couldn't get someone to make these for you they're very complicated cut you have to uh, CNC machine them and the inside is radius to match the, the fork tube but before I digress on the paint job and all the rest of the bling that's on this bike. It's going to take me a while, so bear with me. Um, let me talk about the motor. Come around this side right here. To start with, this is the most beautiful engine Harley Davidson has ever made, the Ironhead Sportster engine, in my opinion. This bike was, the XLCH stands for competition hot. This was Harley Davidson's race engine that they used uh, for many years. Um, and uh, for street racing, drag racing, whatever. He took this motor, he, again, this guy's an engineer. He designed it to be the ultimate Sportster motor. There's not a single nut, bolt, bearing, gasket, seal, uh, piston, crank, everything in this motor is, has been replaced with high performance or is brand new with less than a thousand miles on it. Uh, we put a boroscope in the four plug head, it has a four plug uh, high flow head on it and the piston and the cylinder bore looks brand new. You can still see the cross hatches on a boroscope which I can show you when you come here if you want to see it, the inside of the motor through our LCD boroscope is brand new. Uh, there's no oil leaks anywhere on the engine that I can see. Uh, this engine is an 86 cubic inch high performance motor, yet you can ride it around town. Uh, it's, it's streetable, as I just demonstrated. It's totally streetable. You know, the engine has a, a three and seven eighths inch bore, and I believe it's a four and five eighths inch stroke. It's an SNS flywheel in uh, crank with uh, wide scope pistons and the um, three and seven eighths inch bore uh, big bore cylinders. The heads are were new heads that were sent out to I believe it was Branch. I'll have to pull the the, the, um, the, the, the the invoice. I've got pages of invoices for the engine work that was done to it. The transmission was completely disassembled. Four brand new, uh, 
I believe it was Andrews gears were installed. There's a close ratio transmission, so as you, as when you watch the video of me riding it, as I, as I click through the first three gears, it happens fast. I doubt there's another sportster on the street that, that, that street video that will beat this thing in the eighth mile. It's geared kind of on the low side, um, so it takes off like a, like a rocket ship. The front end comes off the, the, the ground. If you crack the throttle fully in first gear, it'll wheelie it away. Uh, wheelie is very easily, but he dynoed it at 80 horsepower. So this is this this engine alone is, is a work of art, starting with the motor. Come around this side, can I want to show you the push rod tubes? Have a, um, not only did he make this super high performance, he also made some real nice touches, like the gold push rod tube co covers, uh, the heads. Everything is beautiful on this bike. There's no no paint chipping on it. it has the um, uh, uh, flat black painting of the of the engine cover, Harley Davidson uh, logo on on the. Um, Ignition cover. This also, this is a four plug head. What I mean by that, this is this borrows from airplane technology. David was an engineer, but he was also, a, uh, his dad was a pilot, and he told me they always ran two valves per cylinder in case one fouled in an airplane. So there's two spark plugs, one on this side, one on the other side, and it's a Dyna ignition. There are no points in this. It's a, it's a Dyna. Look around the side, Kenny. Um, I'm an Ironhead free. Watch it. Go on my channel and tell, to, uh, type in Ironhead or Sportster. You'll see how many of these hot rod Sportsters we've had come through here. I love these engines. I understand them. This is a right side shift model, which is really unique. Uh, electric start, right side shift. Uh, it has a new cycle electric uh, alternator on here. Uh, but this is the dual coils uh, to the Dyna S ignition. The wiring, look at the wiring on it. All the wiring is brand new on, uh, was new on the bike when the engine was done. Um, so it was a frame off. He didn't cut a single corner. Chrome mounts for the uh, engine, all nice uh, fancy bolts, um, chrome foot pegs, iron head emblem on the side, uh, brand new battery, battery box, battery hole down, uh, has a battery tender hooked to it. Again, this guy's an engineer, so not a single thing was missed. Not only is the engine all high performance, the rest of the bike is too. Um, the uh, brake system on the bike is off the hook. I'll get into that in a second. I, I think I've covered everything on the engine. Um, the primary chain case, all the gaskets, all the seals, everything was replaced at the same time. And a brand new Barnett clutch. Uh, Barnett performance clutch was installed with heavy duty springs. So the clutch hooks up, puts the 80 plus horsepower to the ground. I don't know what the torque rating was on it. I didn't get that figure from him, but I'm sure the torque rating is off the hook because when you get in the third or fourth and crack the throttle, it just pulls, pulls like a freight train. And it's a light bike, the Sportsters are, 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 are light models. Um, I like this year because it has the forward mounted shocks on it. In 78 and 79, you went to the rear mounted shocks. This has a really cool look to it. The, um, I guess I'll go into the suspension next. So the engine, $12,000 and the, the best components you can possibly put in a Sportster engine. And he did the engine some time ago, so any bugs that were in it, he worked out. There's about a thousand miles on it. It's plenty broken in, ready to rumble. The shocks are a performance uh, Harley Davidson shock. They're, um, it has a nice soft spring rate to it, which I like because it's easy on the back. Combined with the, uh, I believe this is a Corbin saddle. Uh, it has a passenger pegs and the passenger, so if you want to ride your girlfriend on it, you can. But the, the front saddle foot is, I, I'm kind of a big dude. I'm six foot two, and it fit me perfectly, man. It just felt really super comfortable on it. The, um, going to the front suspension, the forks on the, on the outside, these are the original Harley Davidson tubes. That's about all that's stock on the front end, okay? There's over, I added it up, there's close to $3,000 just in the front end. You've got your polished stainless billet uh, uh, triple clamps, which are super heavy duty, no flex at all. Look at the steering dampeners on here. It's got a dual steering dampener, both sides of the engine. Uh, both sides of the bike have a steering dampener, so you get no wobble at high speed. It's, it's, it tracks perfectly straight like you would expect a race bike to. Four inch straight dog bone risers with a flat track style handlebar. One of the features I really like is the head, like he mounted it up high rather than down low where it normally is on a Sportster. What I like about that is when you're driving it, the whole world kind of reflects off the chrome on them. Uh, that's one of the things I like about a Heritage. When you ride a Heritage, you can see the whole world off the head. Like, you get the same effect with this right here. Everything's chrome from the, from the polished stainless triple clamps up. Everything's chrome. All the, all the housings, the mirror, the bars, the risers, the controls, the uh, master cylinder for the front brake, braided stainless lines everywhere. Braided stainless stainless clutch line, braided stainless brake hoses, down to the uh, Arlen Ness uh, fitting to, to go to the dual front. These are Hearst, uh, Hearst calipers on the front here. 
They're a high performance brake, considered to be a little bit better than a performance machine. They're very expensive, about 300 bucks each. Dual discs, it has a Harley Davidson chrome hub, twisted spokes, and a Harley Davidson front wheel, uh, which he put in. This isn't the, the original wheel. He took the, the, the lower triple clamps and he turned these on a mill, so they're super, super smooth, and then he had fork, them, fork the fork lowers, and then he had them chromed, okay? So this is, this is a, a lot of hand work on the lower tubes and the triple clamps. Now, here's the piece that I like the most. I was ripping down the road and there's a lot of potholes on the street here and I like cringed a little bit when I saw them coming. This, these forks are nothing close to stock. These are shower forks. The outside tube is original, but it has a, a shower performance dampeners inside of each shot. Most Harleys of this era had no dampeners in the shop. In the forks, this has a performance dampener on both shocks and heavy duty springs, so the front end's off the hook. Triple this brakes, you got a dual front, single rear performance machine on the rear. The front brakes are on point, the tires excellent. So the suspension, the way the bike handles is off the hook. You can lay this thing down in the corners. Uh, going to the back of the bike, the rear wheel is uh, also uh, heavily modified. This is something he made himself. It's a spoke wheel with a um, insert that he had uh, machined to go inside here and it's held on by bolts. You can take this off and there's a spoke wheel underneath here. It looks like a fat boy rim, but it's lighter and it is adjustable and everything's chrome. Has a chrome uh, sprocket cover. Uh, uh, brand new chains and sprockets were put on the bike when the engine was done. Brand new uh, custom dual exhaust. New chrome foot pegs. The entire frame when he had the engine out was painted the same metallic. I think it's an Imram paint. I'm not sure, but it's a two-tone. If you look at it again, blue from one uh, corner. If you look at it from the other angle, it's like a, it's like a, a sort of like a purple haze. Um, gold and blue pinstriping everywhere. And then this mural that's on here, this is 24 karat gold. Again, let me go into the gas tank. This is a whole nother conversation piece. The gas tank is off the hook. Look at this here. This is original factory Harley Davidson gas tank. He took off and he, and he cut a hole in the tank, ran tubes through, brazed them, and put the ignition and the headlight switches are run through the tank. And then you've got your, um, your uh, oil pressure gauge. Now, later down the road, he disconnected those because he found that when he was uh, leaning over the tank that he could shut the ignition off. So he went and put, put a brand new ignition on the side here. So that's not functional. It's more of a, a conversation piece now. But the 24 karat gold leaf, if you had a paint job done like this today, uh, you'd be looking at between painting the frame and the, the, the tins and the oil tank about $1,500. And then you've got a... a, a, a a mural here that would have to be a, a, a six to hundred to a thousand dollars for this mural. Okay, so you got at least two grand into the paint. Again, I've got receipts for twenty thousand dollars of what was put into the bike, including the purchase price, which will be this, this bike sold new for I think twenty. I think I think he paid twenty two hundred for it. Is what he told me. Um, it was a year old when he got it, and I believe it was twenty two hundred. So I added that onto the all the receipts I had, and I came up with twenty thousand three hundred and forty eight dollars of receipts, not including the paint job. So. Uh, in a lot of the other stuff that's on the bike. So, um, absolutely well over $20,000 invested. Metzler tire on the rear. It's a Metzler, Metzler Perfect on the rear. Um, and a Dunlop Harley Davidson on the front. Corbin seat. Um, has a custom mount for the license plate bracket. Mount up high, out of the way, and the rear brake. Um, Kenny, did I leave anything out? I think that it just about sums it up, Ken. Uh, I'm going to include our interview with David on here where he goes over the, the full build, but even after David or before David left, he was, he was saying, yeah, you're definitely going to, I think we definitely forgot some stuff. There's just uh, so much like this. Like, yeah. Everywhere you look, there's, there's, there's a custom artwork on this bike and, and it's, it performs better than it looks in what uh, our bookkeeper, Cheryl, who listens to every bike we ride, she said it, it, it sounds a lot meaner than it looks. Uh, so, in other words, it just sounds like, like, like just, it sounds and runs better than it looks, which is hard to believe because it's such a cool looking bike. But um, he did a beautiful job. Let me show you some of the paperwork we have on this bike. We've got the original over here. We've got the original title from 1974. One owner since 1974. Uh, the um, actual factory service manual. The letter from Motor Vehicle for the title. Um, Again, this is a 1409cc, 86 cubic inch build, uh, SNS Super B carburetor, um, and just pages and pages and pages of note. This company, Sportster Engineering, did the uh, original engine work. Um, 
They're in Abington, Massachusetts. They specialize in sports or high performance sports or, sports or engines. Dave Ford's an engineer. He subbed out most of the machining of the motor and, and creation. Again, uh, push rod covers, plugs, points, spacers, forks, gaskets, every bolt, rocket, shim, bearing, bushing, uh, rollers, shafts, more bearings, guides, intake valves, needles, um, a, a set of later model heads, uh, pistons, manifold, the top mount, on and on and on, pages, pages, every gasket. Oh, they also bead blasted the cases. That's why they're so gorgeously clean and the thing never leaks oil, so they're spotless. Again, this is a bike we did not even wash it. We didn't Windex it. We didn't do anything to the bike. It's exactly the way it rolled into the showroom with Mr. Ford yesterday. Here's another full page receipt uh, for glass beating the heads, uh, hon honing the cylinder after um, storing the, installing the torque plate. Just, just on and on and on. Um, here's another full page. And then, then it goes into, I won't bore you with the details, but pages and pages and pages of invoices for parts and accessories on the bike. And again, this is not, I do not have receipts for everything that was on the bike. No receipt for the paintwork, no receipt for the custom rear wheel, no receipt for the front wheel, no receipt for the turning of the front forks or the, or the um, fork dampers. Uh, no receipt for the paint job, and I, and I just rattled off in easily uh, $3,500 worth of stuff that I don't have receipts for. But what I do have receipts for is over $20,000. So good luck finding a nicer iron head. Um, you can take it from here. I say leave the bike alone, but if you want to make it your own, you can do whatever you want to do. Uh, one thing I would not recommend doing is ever painting these tins. If you ever decide you want a different paint job or color, then I would um, take these tins off because they're absolutely a work of art and they're worth a lot of money to me here at the museum. Uh, I've got the manual here for the SNS Super E carburetor. Um, I've got the Dyna ignition uh, paperwork. Uh, I've got the Cycle Electric. I've got the Performance Machine Brake manual, the SNS manual, the um, Dyna paperwork for the Dyna ignition, for the Cycle Electric alternator, uh, the shocks. Um, just on and on and on paperwork for everything that's been done on the bike. So all of this incl is included. Uh, Mr. Ford is available um, after you buy the bike. If you'd like to uh, discuss with him anything about it, the new owner will get his phone number and be able to discuss with him. Uh, the bike is being sold to raise money for the New England Motorcycle Museum. So any of the funds that we make are going directly to the New England Motorcycle Museum. So not only are you buying a period correct world-class custom sportster, you're also helping preserve motorcycle history by supporting the museum. Um, the paint job, again, this paint job was done back in the late 70s, so it's not perfect. I want to point out there's some checking on the paint right here. That's a patina due to the heat of the, of the oil tank. There's also um, a little bit of checking on the tank here and a small little ding there that's fairly noticeable to the naked eye unless you see it at a different angle. A little bit of checking on the paint up here. But again, this is, I look at those as beauty marks, their character of a bike that indicating this bike was made in an era where, you know, there were no holes barred on, on the customs. On this side here, Kenny, you, you can see that um, he also put in, look at the fuel filter. It's an airplane quality fuel filter, high quality hoses, uh, has it set up so you can see the fuel level in the carburetor. Um, this looks like a nitrous bottle on the front, the stainless steel bottle, if you're wondering what the hell that is. That's not nitrous, that is a oil uh, overflow canister. So uh, to evacuate as much oil as they can from the cases. So um, there has to be an overflow for the oil. So he chose to run it up here rather than back into the air cleaner and messing up the carburetor. So uh, braided stainless lines everywhere you see uh, on the oil returns, um, high quality fittings, chrome shifter, just a stunning machine. Again, the fastest iron head I've ever ridden. Uh, we you, you'll see the XR1000 we had built, which is a brand new motor. That thing couldn't hold a can all this. That thing was probably a, a high 50s, low 60s horsepower. This is over 80 horsepower. Uh, again, it's, it's 1,409 cc's of fire breathing dragon. Yet it's streetable and it fires right up. Electric start. So, hope whoever buys this enjoys it. We can ship this bike anywhere in the world. Um, just to give you an idea of the cost, California, just under 600. Florida, around 400 from Connecticut. Anywhere on the East Coast, 400 or less. Um, if you're going to the UK, we can get it to you for about, what, 700 bucks, Kenny? Yeah, it's like 750. So, uh, without we'll further ado, we'll take it for one last ride, and then Parker, until the new, she finds a new home, if you want to leave it here in the museum, you're welcome to, so. 
So good luck bidding on the bike, and God bless America and the USA for building badass bikes like this.